Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we have a sponsored review and demo from our friends at Glary. If you've been following the channel for a while, I've reviewed pretty much every Glary guitar in existence. And this model recently got an upgrade because we recently reviewed their bases that got the Wilkinson pickups, upgraded strings, the Canadian maple neck among other things. And I thought that was a pretty good base for somebody that doesn't know how to solder and upgrade their base model. So it made sense. But I told Glary, hey, you guys should really do this for the electric guitars now. And they listened. So they asked me if I would take a look at this for them to see if it meets my standards. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. But what model has received this upgrade? Dun dun dun! It's the burning fire. <laughs> and if you know anything about my Glary reviews, I think the burning fire is personally my least favorite body shape from their options. But let's see if all these upgrades makes it a better playing instrument or not. Right away out of this box. Oh man. <laughs> okay, so this was supposed to be like a red finish. It kind of has a slightly pink hue to it at the same time though. It's like a very dark lipstick cherry red. And you know, maybe it's just because it's the second time that I've had a burning fire and the fact that it's a solid body color this time instead of, I think it was a tobacco sunburst that we looked at last time. It's definitely pretty shocking. But the best thing about Glary guitars are they have these big giant baseball bat necks. So if you're somebody who's a beginner, but you're starting later in life, or you're a younger guy that has huge hands, I think that is the best benefit of Glary guitars. And that's the biggest difference between like other budget level models that I've talked about on the channel. It really comes down to personal preference if you like that. Now, generally speaking, a big giant neck generally less prone to warpage, but you know, if the wood's not any good, the wood's not any good. Everything looks okay on this. But in this starter pack, you get a nice little gig bag. It's just a small little nylon bag. There's really no padding to it, but it'll keep the dust off of it. Looks like we are getting a product catalog now. Looks like 5% off everything GDM1 is your promo code. But if you check the link in the description, there might be some other sales going on, depending on when you're watching this video. And they offer a whole bunch of different stuff from, uh, you know, saxophones, clarinets, digital pianos. They even sell hard shell cases. We're actually going to take a look at one of those over there. But it's interesting to see that they do not list the burning fire in here. <laughs> and of course, you get your trem bar if you want to use that in here as well as a cable and a pretty basic little strap. So you're probably wondering what is different this time on the upgraded electric guitars? It's pretty much the exact same thing as the bass. They use higher quality tone woods out of this one. So the normal one, if you buy it, they are 95.99s, whereas the upgrade, it's about $55 more at 149.99. They come with pretty much all the same stuff. It just has, you know, a basic basswood body. This one has a premium grade basswood. Unfortunately, I mean, we, we can't see that technically, but that's what they're advertising these things at. And they also get the upgraded Canadian maple neck versus, you know, whatever maple they were using. But another thing that's different is actually completely the fretboard. We now have a maple fretboard made out of the same material as the neck. But the old ones, I think it was a basswood fretboard that just kind of looked like rosewood. So I think that natural fretboard looks really good with this. But I'm actually seeing a significant difference in the way that the wood feels. So I'll have to uh, plug this in to see if I still feel that after, you know, playing it for a little bit. But also you get the bone nut on this one, which so far it seems to be cut okay. That's actually looking quite nice. And we're getting the higher quality strings on this one, as well as the Wilkinson pickups. So there's not much to, you know, show you in this episode. It's really mainly about, you know, letting you guys hear the difference. You can check out the two different videos to see which one you prefer. But now that we've Taking a look at the guitar, let's set that over to the side real quick and take a look at the case they sent me. Now, if you want a case, it is additional. It does not come included with that. Many times the case is just about as expensive as the guitar because they're selling those guitars so cheaply. 
But so far, it looks like one of the Fender tweed styled ones. It doesn't quite have the same texture to it. Like, whoa, it's making me a little bit dizzy just looking at it. Whoa, that reflects the light in a weird way. <laughs> But instead of like an actual cloth tweed thing going on, it's actually just like a, a design that's printed on it. That's what it feels like. It's a, a gummy texture. Not bad. I really like that handle. I'm going to take it over here. It looks like real leather. Obviously, it's probably not, but it actually looks pretty OK. Let's take a look on the inside real quick. Oh, nice. Dark burgundy material. You got a case key. They even have a, a neck support and a neck locker inner. If you need a cheap case, it's not bad. And wow, they said it wasn't going to fit. That's like almost perfectly form fit. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, if you're buying one of these burning fires and you want to add a case to it, check out their tweed one. I would say that is a certified fit. Okay, let's go ahead, throw this thing on the workbench and take an individual look at its parts and specs, do a quality control analysis, and then finally get to a playing demo to see, is it worth paying about 50 bucks more to get the upgraded parts? Inside the glary burning fire, let's go ahead and see if the upgrades make a difference. So the pickups, once again, are Wilkinson branded. So you can see the neck pickup, it's labeled N right here, and it says Wilkinson on the front. Same thing with the bridge humbucker, except for it's labeled B for bridge. And then what makes the burning fire model unique within Glary's lineup is the fact that it's an HSH setup. So you do have a single coil pickup in here as well. So how much are these pickups? You're probably curious, you know, is it actually worth paying 50 bucks more for these compared to just the standard Glary humbucker? Well, looking online, I mean, they're not the most expensive pickups in the world. Like a set of their humbuckers is about probably around $60 US. And I'm sure a single coil is probably worth like 20. So if you were going to install these pickups in yourself, it's probably worth it just in that. But if you were going to go with something different, you know, maybe not. That's, I guess it's up to you if you like the way that these things sound. But let's go ahead and grab our DC resistance readings. That way we can know what to expect out of this thing. So our bridge pickup reads 8.42 K ohms, our middle position just itself 5.46 ish and our neck pickup at about 7.1 ish. So it's not exactly the hottest pickups in the world, but of course you can also get the combination. The neck and middle together is about 3.1 and this should be about the same, just a little hotter 3.35. Compare that to the original ones of the other one. But as far as our controls here, it's just a master volume with a master tone. These are metal knurled knobs. They're a bit slow to turn, which can be a blessing and a curse at the same time. But the tone position feels especially hard to move. It's not grinding up against anything. We'll have to see if that's like a different brand of a pot in there or what. Then of course our toggle switch like we just talked about. And then this utilizes a bridge that utilizes six individual saddles for adjusting your intonation as well as your height adjustment. You've got the little Allen keys right there to do that with. Then you adjust intonation using these. But as far as seeing through to the basswood body, uh, no luck on that. Everything gets coated in this paint. But I will say the cavity routes actually look surprisingly nice on this. I mean, you still have some buffing compound. Here's what the bottom side of that middle pickup looks like. I just realized I forgot to show you that earlier. So as far as uh, seeing the body wood, no luck there. So we can only go based off of marketing materials on that. However, when we swap over from the basswood body to the maple neck, obviously we can see the wood grain. So this guitar utilizes 24 frets. But if you're looking for a more vintage style one, they do offer a Stratocaster now that's also got these same upgrades. That was not actually available at the time that they decided to send me this one or else I probably would ask for that because I love the Glary Stratocasters. Those are fun. That's my favorite one out of their whole series. I will say that the, uh, the fret ends feel a little bit sharp on this one. Not necessarily sharp here, but sharp right here. So maybe Glary could work on having their employees round those off just a little bit better. I mean, they've got a nice taper right here. They just need a couple of swipes on this side to make it feel even nicer. But as far as playing, I think that's gonna be out of your way for the most part. But if you're like wrapping your thumb around, I think that's when you might notice it. 
but I really like the way that this maple fretboard looks. That's pretty nice, especially when you get the kind of black shark tooth or shark fin inlays. But glary necks are generally unfinished feeling. Like this, I mean, it literally just feels like there's nothing on it, you know, similar to a rosewood fretboard. Where's the back? That's actually something new for Glary. Most of the times the backs of these necks, they also feel raw. This has a very similar feel to that, but you can tell there's a little bit of something over top of that. So it still feels nice, but not quite as raw feeling, which personally, I prefer what they're doing right here. So that's a nice upgrade here. But let's go ahead and grab our measurements here. 1.66 inches at the nut width. Then by the 12th, it increases to 2.02. Our first fret neck depth, 0.94. <laughs> what a beefy neck. I'm scared to see it. Oh man, a full one inch by the 12th. You gotta love glary necks for the giant beefy monstrosities they put on these. Here's a great look at that neck profile. So this is the first fret. It's still big, full, rounded C shape, but then by the 12th, it gets wide and super chunky. And as far as our scale length, it looks like they're going after the 25 and a half inch scale. If I remember correctly, it's a 12 inch radius. Yep, that seems right to me. But we'll take a moment to look at that bone nut. That is the upgraded feature. It's very blocky, but it's still rounded off enough right here. And I'm not feeling any overhang tang like sometimes you can. So I think they're doing a very good job on that. We'll have to see how it holds tuning. But your truss rod is in there if you need to use it. It has a very basic truss rod cover right there. And you've got three on a side tuners with the glary at the headstock. Just for clarification, these are the stock strings. I've just rewound them on the posts. That way there's not so much extra strings on them. That's just the way I prefer to do it. So let's go ahead and move on to the back side of the instrument now. We've got a couple of control cavities, one for our trem system right here and one for our electronics. Let's go ahead and pop those off just like that. So we actually do get to see down to the basswood body in our control cavity right here. It does not appear that they've upgraded the pots or anything. I think that would be the next thing that'd be pretty cool for them to do. Like ship these stock with CTS pots. Looks like it's branded QV16K set, but it does appear to actually all be legitimately soldered. It's no quick connect system but you can see the white looking basswood there. I really wouldn't know high quality basswood from low quality <laughs> basswood, to be honest. But here's what our trim system looks like. Just a tiny little block. A magnet does not stick to it. So, I mean, it's likely not the highest quality trim system in the world, but it should work if you'd like to use it. And you've got your ground wire right there and all your usual adjustments. Looks like uh, somebody made a boo-boo at the factory and drilled two holes right there. As far as the rest of our body here, it is a four bolt on neck. You've got a strap button on the back and then one down here with your output jack right there. It just kind of <laughs> fits right in that little corner that's curved in there. But now we move up the back side of the neck. They still construct these with a scarf joint. So they make the head stock in the top part of the neck and then they join it to this neck with the glue seam right there. That's how they cut some costs. As far as the tuners go, it's just your basic ones. They're nothing too fancy. They look like they might be Schaller in style based on that. If they were to do an upgraded volume two of these, I would like to see everything that they've already done. I mean, they did some pretty good improvements to these compared to their base model, but like upgraded locking tuners would be almost overkill, but you know, when you're upgrading everything, you might as well. And those pots like we were talking about. That's pretty much the only thing left that you can upgrade. But our last spec to capture here would be the weight. So let's go ahead and throw it on the scale. Looks like six pounds, four ounces on my scale. So let's go ahead, plug it in and hear how it sounds. Let's go ahead and walk through the tones of this. That was just the neck pickup. Instantly, I'm actually impressed. At this price point, you can get such rich, luscious tones out of this. That's actually really nice and deep. To the bridge position, see how that differs. Okay, 
I think that might come to life a bit more with some distortion. Now let's try just our middle position. I can dig that a bit. Now let's try the neck and middle position together. It's starting to sound like a Stratocaster. This is not a Stratocaster shape. Now let's try that bridge in middle. Should be fairly similar, I would guess. Let's go ahead and give it a try. So as far as the clean tones go, I'm not a big fan of the middle positions for most tones, but I mean, it comes in handy, but it's really the neck pickup that stands out to me. Starting with our bridge. Pickup works pretty well for the chuggy chuggy stuff and drop D. 
versus the neck. Depending how much sludge you want. Then the middle pickup for that. I like that too, that's pretty aggressive. we know all about the glary burning fire upgraded model what are my final thoughts on this thing i liked it better than the first one but at the end of the day still not really one i would personally suggest it's not necessarily my body style i did have a lot of fun getting some grungy tones out of this thing so it might be for somebody just not necessarily for me the upgrades really were beneficial but i still think we should look into some better tuners because i still had to keep tweaking those despite lubricating the nut and trying my best and stretching the strings in and stuff but maybe it's just because it has a trim and i did not do anything to the setup of this guitar straight from the factory I felt the strings were a bit high, so I lowered them just a hair. But even then, in the higher registers, it still felt a bit high, but it was definitely comfortable. I would say up until about the 12th fret. After that, it's just a little bit higher than I would personally like, so this one would definitely need a little bit more setup activity. And then as far as the strap button placement, that's why I left the strap on here. It's not neck heavy heavy but it does just kind of want to sit like this, which is a pretty natural playing profile. But if you're one of those guys that likes to have it joisted up like this, you're probably going to actually want to move the strap button up here. So at the end of the day, yes, I think it's worth the $50 upgrade if you're interested in purchasing a Glary Burning Fire model, because it would cost you way more just to have a bone nut installed on one of these. So getting the upgraded pickups and everything, it's fantastic. It's also a great guitar if you just want to learn how to do wiring on it. Because look at this, you have three different pickups. I mean, you can put whatever you want in here. I mean, these things honestly did not sound half bad for not being the highest end pickups in the world. But these Glary's, they can be a lot of fun. But ultimately, I would suggest Glary guitars for people who like the big, fat, chunky baseball necks. This is hard to find on budget level guitars. And I've done a lot of these reviews on Glary's and there's always guys in the comments section going, I love Glary's because they're big baseball bat necks. So if that's what you love, you know, like that big R7 style Gibson neck or an R8 for that matter, and you want something a little bit cheaper just to toy around with, that's what I think Glary's are best suited for, people that love that profile. It's either a good or a bad thing, depending on your own personal preference. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed checking out this upgraded Glary. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.